Welcome to me reupholstering a chair for the very first time. This is just me doing this for fun. Um, here is the chair before. It was just a blue leather chair from World Market that had some tattering on the front cushion. So we're just going to begin this process by uh, taking the chair apart into four different sections. So we remove the legs and then next we're going to take out the staples in this black part that like covers the bottom from you being able to see the wood. There were a ton of staples so this part took like an hour in its own because I wanted to preserve the black part otherwise I would have just ripped it out and not cared but I took that off and washed it to where you can now see the undercarriage of the chair and all the holes where uh, the legs went. Um, and then from there I just started taking the whole thing apart. I took the arms off first. They were really easy to get out. The screws are just down on the inside. You just gotta find them. And this is just gonna depend on your chair. And then obviously I don't want to keep any of that ugly blue leather. So I'm just taking it all off bit by bit. Just cutting and ripping and cutting, ripping. And um, just throwing away all the remnants. Um, so we got the top off. I ended up taking the whole bottom cushion off. Like I took the arms off and then continued to take off the leather down in the creases. Some parts are pretty hard, so just be prepared for this to be a little bit difficult. If you have leather, I feel like cloth may be a little bit easier. Um, I took off this foam, which I shouldn't have. I would recommend leaving all foam and batting on. Uh, next, I am gonna go ahead and get some little things done on the chair. One of those includes, I wanna spray paint the legs. I didn't like the dark wood. I wanna go with more of a rust sienna brown because this is what a lot of my house has of accents so i just wanted to match another thing you can do in prep the night before is make what is called piping piping is the like kind of beading that goes in between each cushion to give it definition this will make sense once you actually see it on a chair um, it's what the blue leather chair had you probably saw it um, it's around the edges and this is really easy to make at home this is really affordable i got this rope from a thrift store for a dollar and then you just need to strip of your fabric and you need hot glue so i'm just starting out by gluing the rope down to the fabric to stabilize it so i can begin the rest of the process and i want to mention go through and measure the sections that need piping you can really put it wherever just along the edges measure and then cut your fabric um, and then cut your rope all the same length and then start this process. So I'm just going through and running hot glue all the way down the fabric so that my rope can stick to it. Um, running it down and then sticking the rope down so that it's secure because you don't want that rope moving around within the fabric. So I'm just gonna speed this up, keep doing this, keep doing this. This does take a while depending on how much piping you have. Um, next is obviously to fold it over so that uh, none of that inside fabric is exposed and doing this creates this nice bead because this is the bead that you're going to see um, running down the outside of the chair creating the definition so that's how it's going to look as a preview when it's done but again this is going to make so much more sense once I actually start to staple this to the chair it's going to uh, make everything feel really nice put together. So I'm putting glue on the rope and then I'm putting glue on the actual fabric itself so that when I fold this, it's gonna be nice and secure. I mean, you can do more, you can do fabric glue, but hot glue works because it's just never gonna get rustled around. It's never gonna get touched. So it's just a means of securing it. And hot glue does wonders. That stuff is timeless and seems to work in every project. So running this all the way down, the length of this piping, this is just one piece. I ended up doing like six more other pieces than this that I had measured out. So that's the final product. I'm gonna put this on tomorrow. This is the next day. We're gonna go ahead and get started on the bulk of this project. It ended up taking me about two days total. Uh, so right here, I'm just kind of showcasing the different parts of the chair. Uh, we have one arm and it, I left the foam on. I highly recommend doing that, the foam slash batting. Uh, we have another arm. You'll notice the arms have the curves on the edges, which made this a little bit trickier to do. And then our cushion with the foam kind of damaged underneath, but that's okay. And then the foam all the way around and on top. And then we're left with the base of the chair. Um, I ripped the foam off the back and I shouldn't have. So I'm just showing you that I'm gonna rip that off later. And there's my little cat being mischievous, trying to get herself stapled. 
here's me replacing the phone that I ripped off that I shouldn't have. This is $4.99 a yard at Hobby Lobby. It's really easy to get. I just kind of doubled it up and stapled it to it. It was pretty easy to replace, but it's just kind of annoying. Same for the back. I'm just peeling off the old stuff so it doesn't get in the way and create any like weird layering. And then just putting on the new stuff. I think I doubled this up uh, twice as well, but you could just get something thicker. I just got what was the cheapest and uh, just got one yard and stretched that as far as I could. I can't even watch this dumb cat. <laughs> she was like shredding and running off the phone throughout the house. So probably lock your cat in another room. Um, now I'm going to start on the cushion of the chair. Just pick something and, you know, start covering it. This is me just measuring out and trying to figure out what fabric I need. I sat here for a while debating this. I was like, uh, do I wrap it like a present? Like, how do I go about this? I probably should flip it over like you do a present. So I started to do that and um, marked what I needed, keeping in mind that I wanted to cut about four inches extra, which is a good rule of thumb to have when doing a sewing project. Or, I'm sorry, a reupholstering project. So I'm just going to go through and cut out my square and put this aside. I do want to plug these scissors really quick. These are from Amazon. They're $12.99 fabric scissors, which is a good price for fabric scissors. They were highly recommended and they really do cut the fabric like butter, like the review said. So I can link those below. Uh, now that the this piece is cut out, I'm just leaving it on top of the cushion and trying to just make sure it looks okay. Everything looks good and secure. I'm just going to start. Oh, this is me illustrating and showing there's no wood within this cushion, so that's going to make it hard to staple our piping to it. That's going to be impossible because you need wood to staple into. So Boston and I, uh, my husband, came up with a, fashion, a way to fashion a way to where the staples could stay in without having any wood to grab into. So what I'm going to do is cut this front panel off because this piece is going to have to have piping on both the top and the bottom so it's going to need to be a separate piece since piping will be separating it this will hopefully make sense um, later on it's just kind of hard to explain some of these scenarios without seeing it on the actual chair so now that i've cut off that front strip and just have enough for the sides in the back of the cushion now i'm just making sure that looks okay I'm gonna go ahead and get this position and get it tight because you want it to look you know how it's gonna look on the top no wrinkles or anything because the piping is gonna go around this so I went and grabbed my piping this is a really long piece because it has to wrap all the way around um, and this is again I prepared this the night before so that I didn't have to stop and then go and measure the piping and do the hot glue it's just nice to have that done so I'm kind of finagling with it figuring out how I want it definitely keep the where the piping overlays in the back of the chair so you don't see that obviously in the front or the side just put it in the back so I'm going through and stapling the fabric to the chair to keep it secure while I do this piping even though I'm gonna remove these later um, this is just a matter of getting it on here for now so don't do too many because you're gonna have to remove them and that can be a little bit of a pain if you get them in there too good so I think I ended up doing too many so really just like a couple on each side will suffice so My cat is the worst. Oh my god. This is hard to watch. This is really hard to watch. Um, so we're, if you could see beyond my cat, um, I'm going to just start hot gluing it. And I went back in after I hot glued this with fabric glue, just an FYI. Uh, to keep it a little bit more secure but fabric glue I would do second because that takes a little bit longer to dry and I just did the fabric glue I just kind of stuck the pointy end into where it would fit um, at the top you know since it was obviously already hot glued so really get a lot in the corners because I feel like they're gonna get the most wear and tear when people are sitting down on the chair because they're gonna be rustling against other pieces of fabric uh, so put a lot in the corners and then run a lot along the sides don't do too much because when you push it down you don't want the hot glue to like bubble out and be exposed because you'll see that on the cushion it might be a little bit dark um, and now I just laid the stapler against it as some weight so that glue could dry because that's where the piping meets in the back so I just wanted it to dry and apply pressure on that seam so just going around and continuing this hot gluing process 
all along all edges. Also at the end of this I ended up placing books all the way around it. I leaned books against it to create some pressure. I didn't show that but you can just put anything. You can maybe push it up against the wall. Just really apply pressure to all those sides. I think I did this after I put the fabric glue on which I didn't show but that's kind of how it looks. You can see how it framed the cushion really nicely. It kind of gives you an idea of how this is all going to come together. It looks crazy but once you get that piping on you can really start to see the end vision. Uh, the next day I was like, oh, I don't feel like the glue is enough, so I ended up going in and hand stitching it. You don't have to do this, but it's easy and hand stitching is a whole different thing and having a sewing machine. So I just went in with some gray uh, string that I already had and just went all the way around and hand stitched. I think I hand stitched all the sides but the back and just did a real thin layer. I mean, something's better than nothing. And I had the time. I was waiting on something else, um, so I had the time. Uh, next is going to be putting this front flap on which I mentioned you know we cut this off yesterday this is kind of the method that my husband and I fashioned uh, since there's the staples can't staple to any wood we were stapling it and having the staples go through and then clamping them down um, to where the staples just kind of was held together by the fabric if that makes sense so now that that part's done we're just going in and fitting the cushion making sure the piece that we crafted fits around the cushion properly and now that we have it lined up we just started stapling the bottom um, before I did it all I think I just wanted to make sure it looked okay so just putting it on the chair making sure the seams look nice you know you got to sit on it do that sit test make sure it's good and comfy um, and so now that the cushion's done uh, we're gonna move on to the back of the chair so this is me just going through and making sure I have the right amount of fabric cut. Again, this is similar to the front. You're gonna have a piece of fabric running, separating the front part of this uh, section from the back, because you're gonna have piping on both sides of it to create that definition in the chair. So I cut it into two pieces rather than one that will wrap all the way around because there's gonna be a very long rectangular strip running down with piping on both sides. So now those two pieces, I'm just making sure the back has enough to where it can wrap under the chair and be stapled. So same thing we did for the front, and since there's no wood to staple into on the front of the back of the chair, we're doing that same thing, just stapling in, uh, flipping the fabric over, stapling it, and then uh, clamping those staples to each other as a way of anchoring them, and that way those pointy ends aren't sticking up. Uh, I would sew this, but I don't have a sewing machine. I may have mentioned that before. So that piece is done too now, so just fitting it on the chair, kind of finagling with it, make sure that the piping doesn't look too crazy and that it frames the cushion ni nicely. This was a little hard because the cushion is more round than it is rectangular, like this kind of came out. So you saw I just grabbed some leftover foam and we're just kind of stuffing that in to both of those corners to fill them out better, kind of skewing the natural shape of the chair to make it more boxy than it was round. And here is a better depiction of exactly what we did. We just kind of folded it up. Boston side needed more than mine. So we folded it up, just stapled it in. It's not the best solution, but it worked. You can see it filled out the corners better. So I would highly recommend doing that. It's stapled in, so it's not gonna fall out. And then we're just going around, now that we have it where we want it, and stapling this part to the wood, where there is wood, and just getting it fitted really nicely. And this would just be the front piece. We're gonna move on to the back. Um, which will be a little bit easier because it's just going to be one strip in the back. I'm going to go ahead and try to figure out where my piping needs to go. We already have that piping on the front that we clamped since there's no wood to staple to. But on the back, it's a different story because there actually is wood to staple into. So as you can see, we're stapling into the wood here. Really easy to do. You just want to make sure it's straight and you have it exactly where you want it. I recommend just doing like one staple in the middle and a couple on the outsides and then stapling in the rest. Just so you know you don't start doing a bunch of staples and then mess up the line and then just stapling it down the sides and now that we have all our piping on we're going to start putting on the back this is metal tacking strips this is from amazon this is like eleven dollars for uh 25 feet of this this stuff's a lifesaver especially when you can't get in there and uh hand staple this this is going to be a way of securing uh the fabric to the chair better in a nice way so you're just going to staple this tack strip to the chair or you can put nails through each of the holes on the strip 
and then leave the prong side up and then you're going to feed the fabric into this like the strip is a mouth basically put it into the opening and you're going to leave that and you're going to move on to your other sides this is us doing the right side uh you know you staple the tack strip feed your fabric into it like an open mouth and then the last step is to take a mallet not a hammer and go through and basically close the mouth of the tack strip securing the fabric in and i mean this stuff's like not coming out. This is gonna last forever. And honestly, this is probably more reliable than staples. So I really do highly recommend this stuff. Next, we're gonna move on to this front part of the chair. This is a really easy section. I wish they were always this easy. So now that we have our padding on this section, we're just gonna secure this little rectangular piece of fabric. I left a bunch of little excess on the edges just in case. You're just gonna want to put a few staples on the top and then this piece is also going to require a piece of uh, piping. This will be framing the bottom part of the cushion, you know, since the top part of the cushion all the way around the cushion already has piping. This will be the bottom section, so you're just going to want to put a few staples in this. And then put a few in the bottom as well. I folded this like you would a present uh, just to create a nice edge, nothing that really bulged, kind of weird. You're not going to see this because it's going to be covered by the arm and it'll be the bottom of the chair. It doesn't matter a whole lot, but it just clean cut whenever you can is always good. So moving on to the arm, I'm just going to go ahead and do the front part of the arm here. This part doesn't really matter how it looks so much because it's going to be framed with piping. This is just to create a nice base. So just make sure your staples are like an inch from the front of the chair hidden. Just make sure they'll be able to be hidden by the piping once you lay it over this section. So just go around and secure it. Put as many staples on as you need to. So now we're going to start putting our piping on this area. This is really going to make it look finished and we'll make it come together. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure it's centered and the ends meet at the same spot at the bottom and then just put one right at the top just to get it on there. And then uh, same like we did before, just put staples in as many as you need to. I think I did a staple every like three inches or so and just staple all the way around and then meet at the bottom and do a nice little fold at the bottom and secure it. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our tack strips on one side of the chair. Like on each arm, put them on one side. And then we're gonna go ahead and measure out our fabric for each arm of the chair. I'm just gonna show you one here. Again, I was just kind of wrapping it like it was a present and leaving some excess to make sure I had enough. So now that we have that part cut out, we're going to go ahead and start putting our the bulk of our fabric on our arm on. For this side, I won't use the tack strip. I'm going to do the method of leaving an inch of the uh, back side of the fabric here. And then I'm going to flip it over so that it has a nice edge. You'll kind of see as I'm doing this, I keep flipping it to make sure it looks nice. Now that I've stapled about an inch of it uh, there. And you're just going to do this all the way around. Um, to the part of the chair where mine actually had a little uh, kind of hole right here was it along the edge here so I was able to just stick my finger in there and stuff the excess fabric in there the more I think the more fabric you have the more excess you have the more secure it will be I don't know if your chair will have this so you don't have to do this you can continue to run the fabric down and put some staples there because it's gonna have another flap of fabric that covers it which you'll see in a second so just getting it ready and then cutting off the excess off both edges. 
and then this will be the back side of the chair this will be covered by the cushion you know because it'll be the inside so it doesn't matter too much how this looks just make sure it's flat at the top and then secure it into the piece of wood right here i cut it to this length because i knew this is where my wood was and i wanted to be able to staple into that so this is the edge that will need to be secured with the tack strips because you won't be able to get your you know stapler in there and staple it and so uh, just feeding it in to the strip all the way around this goes really fast really easy to do and then my favorite part is malleting it in because it makes it look so beautiful and finished and it's just really like fun to do and now um, that we're done with that part we're gonna move on to this last part of the arm this is, I'm just putting a little excess fabric right here to cover the foam so that when we do lay the strip down here, you no know, foam will show through at that the very top seam, you know, because part of it's just tucked in, so it just leaves this huge foam area up there. So I'm just putting this there for my own sanity, just to make sure, and I had tons of extra fabric, so I just cut a little strip here. So this is the part that's going to lay over this little flap right here. I'm going to do the left side first, and... Um, doing the whole, you know, stapling an inch of it and flipping it over. You don't need the tack strip because, you know, you can actually reach it. And so I recommend doing the left side first. Do the shorter edge first. That way um, you can reach the top. If you do the top first, it's going to be harder to get your stapler in there and do the left side. So do the left and the top with staples. And then the part that you can't get in there and use your stapler on, I would use the tack strip. So just feed it in. And then I did the bottom um, to kind of get out all those creases. So I knew I had all the excess at the end there. So I was able to tuck it in and I did have to cut off some. And so then I'm just feeding it in and mounting it and stapling the bottom. And that's the arms. And that's the, actually the it for the chair. So Boston assembled it for me. Um, I didn't show this just because every chair is gonna be different. So we just had to put it together, screw in the legs, and then we stapled on the like backing, that black part on the chair so you don't see the open wood. And that was it. Boston made me turn around and he flipped the chair over and we had a cute little reveal. And then I styled it and I sat in it to test it out. And I have to say, it was it was pretty comfy. It'll do. It'll do for a little bedroom chair. And then the next day I uh, tested it out some more. I think I'll read here a lot. I'll just chill, maybe on my phone. And then mostly we'll probably play our instruments here, our guitar and our ukulele. So I did that for a little while that day. Um, but I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this. I'm just a beginner. This is my first reupholstering job. This is a no-sew method, so I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, maybe you can leave a comment. I might leave the comments on. I just don't want any hate. There's a lot of hate on upholstery videos out there that I saw. This is just me and what I did, and I hope this is somewhat helpful to you in some way.